you've ever asked what the best tool for exploring is, the answer is simply this, Backroad Map Books. These are Canada's premier backcountry maps and outdoor recreation guides. They're available for every province. Ontario is broken up into six different map books, covering the areas of Northeastern Ontario, Northwestern Ontario, Southern Ontario, Southwestern Ontario, Cottage Country, and Eastern Ontario. All these map books contain detailed back roads and recreational features, trail systems, paddling routes, parks, recreation sites, wild management units, and crown land, as well as private and restricted land details. Remember, adventuring is challenging and fun, so bring a few friends. They'll help you along the way. So let's go ahead and look at some back road map books. Uh, this is my copy of the Northeastern Ontario uh, version of the back road. It's a fairly old one, as you can see, it's uh, well used. There's some water damage on the cover, but hey, that just means it's been with me for a long time and we've had many adventures together. So when you go ahead and open up, uh, you're gonna get through a few pages here at the start, some ads, uh, then make your way over to the uh, table of contents or legend area um, as you can see at the very top here we've got some road classifications uh, for the most part uh, what you're going to want to be looking for are the industry roads for service roads uh, developed trails uh, deactivated roads and unclassified roads um, those are where i focus my areas on uh, but everybody's got their own different uh, plans, I guess, right? Um, you've also got a little area um, so you can tell which of these recreations might appeal to you, like beaches, uh, some campsites. They're more or less uh, smaller parks, or you don't see a lot of these in Ontario. Uh, some are backcountry sites uh, tied to provincial parks, uh, which you might not be able to access with a four wheel drive vehicle. Um, a lot of them are canoe or hike in only. Um, but you do have, you know, your ATV trails, uh, rock climbing areas, snowmobile trails, uh, picnic sites can usually be a nice little spot uh, on a lake, maybe with a boat launch. Good little stopover spot for a break or have some lunch. Um, down at the bottom, you've also got miscellaneous uh, icons. Uh, basically, you know, just give it a once over. It's really going to help you um, plan your trip. Because uh, they do have a lot of nice points of interest um, throughout the map books. So if we switch over here to one of my favorite areas uh, to go to and explore is the Batchewana Bay uh, area of Lake Superior. Just about it's about an hour north of Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, as you can see, just you know the the amount of logging roads in this area are just endless. Um, Obviously, when you get on the logging road, sometimes it's a nice, smooth gravel surface. Other times, there's uh, some pretty extreme washouts we've encountered, especially in early spring. Um, but they do still do a lot of active logging, uh, so the roads are relatively maintained uh, when they're being used. The thick uh, black lines here, those are all your main logging road arteries. Uh, then you've got some smaller, thinner black lines, which are your crossover roads. Um, a lot of those is, you'll be taking those to get to various campsites. As you can see, they come pretty close in contact with lakes uh, and rivers. See the different contour lines and elevation. Um, the, the shading helps, you know, usually if it's a heavy shading, uh, you're looking at a valley. Uh, and you can also tell when there's a river running through it. It's going to be a nice picturesque area. Um, especially in this area. Uh, during the fall, you get those really nice rocky valleys. Uh, there's a lot of great photo opportunities in this area if, if that's what you're looking for. This is the Southern Ontario map book. Um, it's great for day trips. Um, as soon as you open it up, as you can see, it is Southern Ontario, right? So it's, it's a lot more congested and populated because, uh, you know, that's where... 90% of the population of this province lives, so that's understandable. Um, but even then, we can still find quite a few, you know, interesting places to explore, right? Like, this is the entrance to the Beaver Valley. 
um, around just north of Shelburne. Um, zoom in here. What we've got is this escarpment slash valley area just north of Shelburne. Uh, a lot of these roads are not maintained by the municipality. Uh, therefore, it's a great area to explore. Uh, so you're seeing a lot of the black lines again, which are just, in this case for Southern Ontario, they are gravel roads. Um, the thinner black lines off of those are usually no maintenance, ro no winter maintenance roads. Um, that's where you're going to find a lot of the snowmobile trails during the winter intersect. So that's why during the winter when we say most trails are closed, that's why. Uh, because the snowmobile trails, uh, they've struck in deals with the municipalities to use those roads during the, during the winter. And there's a lot of money that goes into the OFSC trail system. Um, and those guys do not get a lot of time to use those trails and they pay a lot of money for them. So we don't want to go on those trails and mess them up because that can cause serious problems for the groomers and deadly problems for the snowmobile drivers themselves. So when you're looking through in Southern Ontario and you see these gravel roads, it's a good place to start. Uh, look for the elevation changes in particular. Um, a lot of times with these elevation changes, you're not going to see a lot of maintenance and you're also not going to see a lot of homes being built on them. Uh, therefore, the, the gravel roads kind of tend to become more narrow two-track trails. Um, Therefore, they, you know, they're just, they're less traveled. Um, usually, you know, you run into some bridges that have just gone to the waywards. Uh, therefore, you end up like with tiny little water crossings, um, which, which can be quite, you know, fun and a great photo op. Same goes for the Beaver Valley area here. Because um, as we move just a little bit north, uh, north of Flusherton uh, and Eugenia, um, again, you've got a lot of those... You know, twisty, twisty roads, um, gravel roads that aren't straight. But then you've also got a lot of smaller, uh, unmaintained and deactivated roads in the area, as you can see by the smaller black lines that run off of the main thicker black lines, which are the gravel roads. A lot of times, if you look for something like this right here, uh, where you've got gravel roads on both sides, uh, and then you've got a small skinny line that is not connected on the map. Uh, in most cases, in the real world, it is connected. It's just not connected on a map. Um, for whatever reason that might be, um, those are going to be your actual trails. Uh, those will be, you know, tight. They'll be a little bit muddy or rocky depending on the area. Um, that is what you want to look for when you're out exploring. Uh, when you come down the road, you'll see like no exit or no winter maintenance or the road is unmaintained. Um, don't always believe those signs. Those signs are there to keep the people that just want to go straight through for whatever reason. Um, you know, if you're out in your Prius and you're driving down the gravel road because there's construction or an accident, whatever, you don't want to go down this road. So they don't want you down that road. So when you're out exploring, definitely be on the lookout for those kind of roads. Things that come to a sudden end and then pick up on the other side. Uh, those are going to be worth checking out. And see another one over here that is a very, very thin, uh, gra very, very thin black line uh, flanked by two gravel roads. Um, that is going to be another no maintenance road. As you can see, there is a, a, a series of them. It goes thin black. Uh, thicker black, then your main concession, then a thin line, and then just a normal gravel road, then a thin line, and, and back to a normal gravel road before reconnecting to this concession. Uh, those are going to be very worthwhile checking out. You're going to find some nice, you know, tighter gravel roads, uh, and probably some two-track in that section as well. When you're out and about and on the go, one thing you're going to need to know is how to use this grid section. As you'll see on the bottom, there's an A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Uh, and along the outside of the page, there is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Um, and then you'll see interconnecting lines uh, going all the way through. So for the in very instance in the bottom here, we've got G7. Um, if you want, if you're driving down... Uh, Gray Road, I believe this is the County Road 42 uh, from Stainer. 
Um, and then all of a sudden you get to the end of this map and you're in G7. You're going to want to follow the direction here at the very bottom that says C map 52. So we flip over, we scan to, we scan to uh, page 52, as indicated here in the bottom corner. Uh, flip over, uh, and now you are in G1, the corresponding corner to that map. To find that out, we've just stuck with G. Uh, that that's that's where we were um, on the top and the bottom of the page uh, and that's where you're gonna end up when you flip to the next page uh, you can also see that for um, heading over from Terra Nova you are now at G4 uh, so if you wanted to con continue that on to, onto page 53 we flip over to page 53 and now we head at this 4 uh, you are now at A. As, as you drive along, you just continue to follow those those grid coordinates. So right now you're at A4. You drive further south, you'd end up at B. When you go to the next page, which is 45, you'll be at E1. And then that's you know you just continue that pattern as you're as you're traveling, and you'll find it very easy to maintain your position on the map so you know where you are. As you can see on the back, each individual section is numbered. That number is the corresponding page in the map book that you'll want to go to. So say today we wanted to go and explore near Markdale, uh, we'd be on page 51. So you head on over, you head over, keep flipping through all these pages, and there's page 51 right there. If you open that up. You get to wherever you decide to want to start, probably the Tim Hortons in Markdale. Uh, that's where I like to start, usually at the Tim Hortons. Grab a coffee before I head out. Uh, and then you just head from there, pick a direction, and start driving. So another really good tool to pick up besides the back road map books are the books by Ron Brown. Um, particularly the top 115 unusual things to see in Ontario and back roads of Ontario. Uh, both of these books I really, really enjoy for trip planning. Um, he's even got, you know, some little trips that are already planned out for you, right? These maps are very rudimentary, um, but at least it gives you a general idea of where to go. And he's got numbered stops that are referenced in the articles um, for interesting things to see along the way. Uh, for instance, this is one area that I love to do for a fall drive. Uh, it takes you through a number of valleys, uh, through Hockley Valley, Bain Valley, Pine Valley, Nosy Valley, Mad Valley, uh, Pretty Valley, and then finally the Beaver Valley. Um, during the fall, this area is quite congested, but it is still very well worth it. You know, he's very, very thorough uh, in his research. He's been doing this for many years. Uh, this is just a mix of, not so much trails, but a mix of uh, back roads that are paved and gravel roads as well. And as you can see, you know, Eugenia Falls here is a very beautiful spot to stop. There's a lot of old buildings, there's a lot of history in these areas. A lot of time and thought have gone into this book. I would highly recommend it. I'll have links to both of these books uh, in the description for purchase on Amazon. So now we're going to talk about the Backroads Mapbook layer on Gaia GPS. Uh, as you can see, I've been using Gaia GPS for about three years. Um, it's been very great. Uh, it's been very helpful. Uh, it's constantly updated. Um, I've used it to make a lot of tracks all over Ontario. So as you can see, um, you've got the Backroad Mapbooks Canada layer with uh, the Gaia Premium subscription. Um, you've also got a trails layer. That overlay will show you various hiking trails as well as the Trans Canada Trail. Um, and you've also got snowmobile trails and ATV trails as well that are on separate layers. Um, so, as you can see, once you zoom in, um, there are many, many different... It's, it's very, very similar to the book um, in terms of how the roads are laid out. You've got a little bit more more detail because you you can clearly see the road names, unlike in the book. Uh, if you carry a magnifying glass, 
you're good. Um, but for most of us, um, not so much. Uh, so as you zoom in here, uh, this is where you can start to see um, some of the more limited maintenance roads. Um, the, the, usually the straight white roads, those are going to be your gravel roads. Uh, then as you can see, it does run into a very, very fine black line. Uh, a lot of these other black lines are going to be um, more laneways for farms. Um, but something like this that does run from a side road and then continue on to the same numbered side road, um, that's going to be a worthwhile road to check out when you're out exploring. Um, as you can see, it's very easy to drop waypoints. That's just a transport truck that is up on about a 100 foot pole that we came across one day. Um, it's quite worthwhile to take a photo of that kind of stuff. Uh, here you can see a lot of hiking trails just south of Own Sound. Um, you got the Ingus Falls Conservation Area there. But yeah, uh, it's, it's worthwhile and when you're comparing it to the book, uh, it's very easy to transfer the information between the two. Now one thing that the app doesn't have uh, that the book does have is the points of interest. Um, for instance, in the book here at Cape Croker, you would see that there is a lighthouse here. You would see that there is a boat launch at the end of that road. You'd see that there's a picnic area around here. Um, it just does not simply have that information in the map. Um, but that's where Cruff referencing the two will definitely help you out. You, you can use one without the other, but for the most part... The two should work together very, very well. Uh, and I would highly recommend still always having the paper mouse with you because if your tablet dies, what are you going to do for navigation? So as you can see here in much more detail uh, is the elevation changes. Um, it's not as easy to see that the shading helps on the map book, but you know you can't pinch and zoom a map book where you can with your tablet or your phone. So as you can see, the clear elevation change along the Bruce Peninsula between the land and the water. Um, that is the Niagara Escarpment. Um, but as you can see, that's, there's a lot of hiking trails uh, that you can stop at and enjoy. This is the main Bruce Trail that uh, heads out from Barrow Bay to Lion's Head. Um, it is a very, very rugged trail. Uh, if you have the time and you have the energy, it's worth the stopover and it's worth the hike. So one thing that the digital maps do not offer through Gaia is Crown Land. Um, in the books, as you can see, uh, Crown Land is semi shown with a green shading. Uh, the only green shading on the digital maps are provincial parks and conservation areas. Therefore, it is important that you do your research if you're solely using the, the digital maps on where you can and cannot camp uh, because you don't want to be camping on any private land. Uh, that can lead to some negative interactions with the property owner, obviously, but as but other users as well. More than anything else, adventuring is about spending time with family and friends. Please adventure responsibly and enjoy your time outside, but always remember to obey any posted signs and tread lightly.